right, Ebony, welcome back to the world. I know, right? You've been gone some time. <laughs> and it's really it's interesting because I don't know you to be one who just sit back and do nothing. So you got to tell me, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Well, besides extending my family, um, I recently got my master's degree wow, in uh, global marketing. You know, I was always had an inch. You know, I want to know what's going on in the social media world. But um, you know me, and uh, for those of you that are getting to know me, if I want to know something, I am definitely going to invest in that part of my knowledge. You know, so. So let me let me let me go back and talk about how we met. Yes. Um, you were years doing, ago. Years ago, you were doing a a radio on an internet radio station, right? And I walked into a building, and they told me, "Hey, you know, you should do a show here." I said, "Well, if I do a show, it's got to be something that, with somebody that I'm interested in working with." You know, not just a bunch of randoms. And I looked up on the wall, and there's a picture of you and some other girl on the wall. And I'm like, well, who is she? And then he's like, oh, that's Ebony. And that's how he said it. That's Ebony. Like, okay. I'm like, okay, well, can I, I work with them? Her, yeah, right? yeah. The guy picks up the phone. He calls you, and you show up about a half hour later, right? At the time, that didn't seem like much but because you didn't know me. Right. But the fact that you stopped what you were doing and, and came up there said a lot about you. You know, the kind of person you are, how serious you are about moving forward in your life and in your career. And so then working with you, I got a chance to really get to know you and to watch you. And one of the things that always amazed me is your ability to get people to open up and your ability to just talk to people and make people smile. And that's a knack because I know a lot of people <laughs> who try that and it don't work. You got a gift to just getting people to listen to you and open up and share with you. And so I'm always interested in where you go next because you've always been doing something. And so now you're back in the, in the I don't even know if you're back in the world because you've been here, but you kind of took a little time off. You said extend the family. And so now the world's been missing you and, <laughs> and now you're back. And, and so what you got planned? Yes, I'm, I'm back. Um, you know, for a while with the grind, um, my, my family took a back seat and um, I wanted to give in to them a little bit more than what I was given. Um, my daughter had lost her father, mm -hmm. which, um, of course, required a lot of time, you know, to make sure she stayed in the right place. But then also I was going through a separation. Not a lot of people know that at that peak of Ebony Cruise here in uh, the Tampa Bay area, um, I was going through a heavy um, separation. And, you know, that's something that happens throughout life, but that separation was actually the spark that gave me the drive. Um, you know, for some people, it's so many different things, but um, I can remember just standing in the courtroom knowing I'm losing my home. Mm -hmm. um, and I, ironically, I was served foreclosure papers in Orlando while I was working, thinking my life has gotten together, I've gotten rid of this guy, and now take on the world, right? I was sadly mistaken by that um, because, like I said, two sheriffs came to my job and served me with foreclosure papers. Um, and maybe two weeks after that, I was uh, let go. Mm. So I'm thinking, like, wow, this new journey. I decided I moved my kids to a whole nother city um, with no family. And um, this is what happens. Dang, great timing, God. <laughs> Um, well, but, there's, this, there's this saying that, you know, God opens one door closes or so another one opens. I don't know if that's always true, but in your case, did you feel that way? Did all that that you went through, did it open you up to new opportunities? Yes, it did. Um, it, it allowed me to start my nonprofit. Originally, I was focused on helping kids. Um, and then now where I am today is helping women. I want to see women so successful because, you know, we wear, we carry a lot of weight on us, you know, from trying to run our households to having this hobby that we want to be a business, you know, to just being a role model to those around us. It's, it's a lot that we carry and we, you know, get that one day, Mother's Day, the same Father's Day, you know, or you get the Women International Month. Um, but we don't take a lot of time personally to just look at what we do and, you know, what we've accomplished. And so now um, that moment in my life actually just changed me to want to see success. I want to see people around me successful. I want to see people growing and glowing and, you know, chasing their dreams because that's something that I, I used to put on hold for a while because I wanted to make sure everybody around me was okay. So what kind of kid were you? <laughs> like, I wonder if anything that manifested as a kid 
kind of transcended into your your adult life? Like as a kid, as a young, as a teenager, you know, what kind of person were you then? I was a military baby, so that's rough in itself. You know, every two to three years, you're getting new friends. Um, the outside person looking in would think that's exciting. But for me, um, I felt like we lost a lot of just growing up around our family. You know, I didn't grow up around my cousins. So when I see my cousins, it's like saying, hey, like, hey, how you doing? You know, we don't have that bond. So that's something that I missed out on and, and just learning how to build relationships. So as a teenager, um, I remember actually coming here in Tampa, Florida, went to Robinson High School. And um, at this point, it was no more moving. My dad had retired. So I'm like, okay, this is it. I could do this, you know. Um, but there were already relationships established. How can I come in and, you know, be a part of what's going on here? How can I put my mark in? And it was through sports. Um, I played basketball. I ran track. I did volleyball, cross country. My dad forced me to do ROTC. <laughs> Um, I guess that's the discipline that I needed, okay. you know. Um, but it was through sports. It was through sometimes picking at myself so somebody else wouldn't pick at me before, you know. It was like, oh, okay, I don't have the J's because my parents, whether we were in the military or not, if the PX had the Nike on sale <laughs> for fifty six ninety six, that is the shoe that I was getting. <laughs> whether it was for a man or a woman, you better make it work. You know, so I, I didn't have little stuff like that. Although we were very blessed, it's just before my defense mechanism would be before you kind of, you know, poked at me. Let me just get it on out the way. Mm -hmm. And, and embrace it. And I always just had a thing of just kind of making people laugh, you know, about just the little silly stuff. It's it's interesting because I think when you look back now on, on how you grew up and how you were raised, it, it probably explains who you are today, like in most cases with people, right? You look at how we came up, the things that were put into our lives, the people that surrounded us, uh, the parents. You are a product of two parents. Yes, you know, so blessings. You're, you're blessed, yes, yeah. right? And your dad had a chance to you know, be an influence on you where sometimes fathers tend to fall back on girls and let the mom handle the, the, the bulk of the work. But your dad was pretty interested in making sure, you know, his, his daughter was all right and yeah. able to take care of herself, which is great. Because now you're out in this world dealing with people in the media, dealing with strangers, dealing with, you know, people from Tampa and outside. And you have to be built for that right. in order to navigate that because those could be a lot of sharks swimming around that area. Right. When you were stepping out there at the radio, put you out, so you, sports is done. I think I got a chance to see you play football once or twice. Yeah. yeah right? So that must have been the end of the sporting career, yeah, right? Yeah, it was like, listen, I'm getting old. <laughs> These knees hurt. <laughs> and so then you step out into the entertainment. So you get in the radio. We see you. you you're hosting the Urban Cafe. You were the one of the people who helped me start the show, Urban Cafe. Uh, you were the first host, uh, the inspiration behind the whole show itself. And um, watching you talk to people on the radio, watching you bring people into the fold, uh, then you stepped out there and now I, I'm seeing you on stage and I'm seeing you in classrooms and I'm seeing you uh, in meeting and boardrooms. And so how has that transition going from behind the mic uh, off, off, off getting off a radio and going out into the community? How did that transition work for you? That was a, a difficult transition um, because what most people knew was my voice. So it was a matter of, can I walk this walk that people think I am? You know, everyone has their imagination of who is that voice? You know, are these her values based on what she says? Is this what she does? You know, they built their opinion on me based on topics that we discussed. Mm -hmm. So when I got out and had to mingle, a lot of people didn't realize I was as goofy as I am. You know, <laughs> a lot of people didn't realize that. and And many people think that I'm actually not a welcoming person. They, some people, I've heard people say before that, you know, I just would never have known you were that down to earth. So it was kind of like a shock of, am I not transparent, you know, enough um, for people to really know who I am? Mm. And it really scared me sometimes when it came to going on stage um, in any aspect, whether I was teaching or entertainment wise, because I, I began to adapt myself, like, can I do it? Can I live up to these expectations? Mm -hmm. Um, when I didn't really know what the expectations were, right? you know, and I think that's why I did so many different things. You know, at one point, you know, I was from radio to coaching to um, teaching tr classes to feeding the neighborhood. You know, I was just everywhere because I don't really think I understood exactly what my mark was, what my calling was or what I was supposed to live up to. You know, how do you balance all that? 
with being a mother too? Um, man, those kids, they, they, they were like personal assistants. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the longest I had, I had six kids and not all birthed. You, I, you know, you remember all these kids. I used yeah. to have like a, a van almost, you know, <laughs> but I never would get a van because I don't believe in soccer mom vans. Okay. Got to have an SUV. Um, but I have four foster kids that, um, I mentored based on a domestic violence situation. And it was like, okay, how am I going to be mom to not only my kids, but these other kids and also still, you know, pursue my dreams. Um, so it was like, you know, the best way I could do it is just live by example. I'm just going to bring them with me. They're going to get to know people. They're going to learn different stuff. If you want to talk today, well, you know what? Get on this mic and talk. You want to do registration? Well, you go registration. Do you want, you know, and I just put them all in places at the events to where when I would come to an event, people would say, where are the kids? Like, you didn't bring them today? Um, dang, they, they made that big of a difference. <laughs> like, I didn't realize it. Um so I thought I was helping them and also still chasing my dreams. Um, we had a lot of movie nights. Um, we definitely did um, our Friday. It was just kind of like our night to be with each other. You know, phones were off, TV is off, and we just have our conversations. It was just something that, you know, my daughter now, 14 years old, says she misses that because we don't do it as much anymore, that we just had those moments to be with each other, you know? So balancing... It was um, at the time it was it was an act, you know, I don't I don't know how I did it. If you if to be honest, I didn't I was on a schedule. <laughs> we were very disciplined and um, definitely on a budget, because like I said, I was going through a foreclosure. So and ironically, during that foreclosure, um, I took on four kids like who does that? You know what I mean? I, I well, I sit back and look at that. Like, what were you possibly thinking to take on four additional kids when you're losing your house yourself. Like, I I don't know. And for whatever reason, I had the strength to do it. And it honestly gave me the strength I needed when my daughter lost her father because it, it put a bigger responsibility on me. And it's it was just it was just really hard. You know, it was it was hard. I remember but I'm very thankful for that. The interesting thing is that, you know, after it was said and done um, you know, you you put your game face right back on. You know, when you came to the studio, I think you took one just one week off, then you got right <laughs> back in, and it was hard to tell that you even was going through that, which is a kind of a thing where you can see it's a true professional. One of the things they say about being a professional is having to do the things that you have to do, especially when you don't want to do them. Right. You know, and if you do them anyways, then that means you're a professional. Uh, was that, you know, through all your trials and tribulations, the, the separation, losing the home, um, losing your, your daughter, losing the father, your daughter, losing her father. W was that the lowest point or was there other points that even went deeper than that, that you had to come back from? I think that was my lowest point to where I this I started taking life serious and I put everybody in a, um, a grief class, grief counseling class um, through hospice or whatnot. But I put everybody through this grief counseling class. And when we got there, there were so many other kids that were experiencing the same thing, some more tragic than others. But we all rode home and literally laughed like, woo, we are so good about our situation. <laughs> like, Lord, did you hear about this story? Mama, no, you didn't hear this other girl's story. We like, goodness, we are so blessed. We think we have it so bad, you know. And so for them at that age to make light of it, it was just like, you know what, God, <laughs> Although you may do some things in some crazy ways, like I so appreciate, you know, what you have put on me, you know. You know, this is my second time seeing you cry. <laughs> do you remember the first time? Oh, no. I cried before? Yes. You had just finished interviewing Althena Joyner, and she had put on you, uh, she had seen in you what many of us see in you that you might not have seen in yourself yet, but she laid on your on your burden that you are to be a queen and you have a lot of work to do. She <laughs> can tell by who you are that you were going to do some great things. And she just spoke it. It wasn't like even rehearsed. She just kind of stopped and said these things to you. And and it was so heavy that this lady was seeing you, you for who you are about to become that she almost 
you know, prophesized it. Yes, right? the Hat Lady, uh, yeah. Chloe Coney. Chloe, okay, Chloe, Chloe Coney. Coney. Yes. Yeah, Chloe Coney. That's, that's, that's how Hattitude came about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and after that, you you know, your tears started rolling down, and <laughs> I wasn't quite sure why, but I think it was just the moment that this lady was, you know, putting on you that you know, it's almost like she was passing a torch to you or something. You know? She did. You know, to this day. Um, um, on social media, she follows, she, you know, like, Hey, where are you? Where's that hat? I don't see that hat anymore. You know? Um, but she just, her words were so strong that day. And I think it was something that I just needed to hear. Um, that just, it just made me break down. You know, it's certain conversations that I would like forbid having, you know, because I'm like, I'm not going there with you all today, you know, Me and too. I would either walk away or just kind of get quiet. And, um, that was the conversation we couldn't hide from, you know, we mm. was just in this little room, <laughs> <laughs> me, you and her and the microphone. And it was like, Oh man, you know, what do I do? What do I say? And my emotions just ran through my body for someone who barely knew me. I reached out to her to ask her to be my keynote speaker for my first ever yacht ride. You know, I wanted to give the community so much. You know what? I'm taking the community on a yacht. <laughs> I want to take anybody who's there. That's, that was like my goal then, you know. And for her to say yes and believe in me, it was like, why well, does lady doesn't even know me? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so it just, it really just hit a, a tough spot for me. It hit a real soft spot, you know? Well, that's good. And so is that where attitude began? That is where ha she gave me that push um, and her blessings to to say that if anybody in this community ever says that you stole my style, you took my hat, I am giving this to you, like you said, passing this torch mm -hmm. to you myself so you know that I support anything that you are doing in attitude. It was born, you know. That was the first yacht ride. Um, you know, we were in Clearwater. Um, it was just my first like big event that I put on myself. So what is had what did attitude represent? What was the meaning behind it? Attitude was um, your hat as women back in the day is their crown. You know when you went to church. One thing I remember about my grandmother she'd go to church with these hats. I'm like another hat, you know. But that was their way of just you know shining. That was their way of just showing off who they were. That hat spoke volumes, you know. Monday through Saturday, they might have been the domestic wife, but on Sunday, they were their independent shine, and it was through those hats. And mm -hmm. so the idea for hats were, you know, to teach young girls because nowadays you don't see people wearing hats like that. When you see a person with a hat, it's like, who is? It? I want to know who that person is. Um, and that was a whole part of branding of myself that I didn't even know I was branding myself, but I. I found the courage to wear hats to events that you didn't even need a hat. I was wearing a hat, you know? <laughs> um, but I wanted little girls to believe in themselves at a much younger age and not to wait until, you know, um, 28 going through a separation, you know, but, but you personally, you didn't have, you didn't wait that. I mean, you didn't have those problems. You didn't have those issues. You grew up with a you know, well-rounded cast of supporters around you. So what made you want to look at a younger demographic and say, hey, let me help you through a, a hard time that I didn't go through? Because I, because I was blessed. Um, my mom plays a huge role in, in my life. You know, she's pretty much like the bestie, you know. And she talks about you know, sometimes not always living her dream. You know, she was, you know, the best wife to my dad as she possibly could be. And, you know, an awesome mom to us, you know. But deep down, I know there's so much in her that she wanted to do, um, but she couldn't. And even with her siblings, it was so many of them because they had to work. You know, she talks about working in tobacco fields. You know, she talks about um, the farm that my grandparents had, you know, picking the peas. And, you know, she talks about not really having a childhood because they worked. And that was that's the truth for so many people, you know, especially that baby boom, boom boomers. St that's what their life was about. You know, it was so many of them that they never had their own clothes. It's always pat hand me downs, you know, things like that. So for me why I wanted to give back so much to other kids and other people was because I was blessed for me to be a single parent. My kids are blessed. You know, my kids have lived like they've been in a two parent household all their lives, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, I'm just a blessing that I'm able to provide for my kids like that. But I wanted to give back 
to others and let them see that this isn't your this isn't it this this may be your circumstance but you can be whatever you want to be you just gotta but in the sooner you believe that and the sooner you realize that oh my goodness honey those wings are gonna start and you are off you know and and that for me it was a situation that made me change you know i could have been walking around the same ebony doing the same oh you know um not helping but i just wanted to know what 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 my impact is going to be on this world when I leave, you know? What will people remember? Will they even remember? Will they didn't even know I existed besides a tombstone, you know? And ironically, I don't even want a tombstone. I want to be cremated and tell... I told everybody for my funeral, like, my kids hate when I talk about death, but... I want to be cremated and I want y'all to take a cruise and party and throw me out in the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Like enjoy. So ce- I had a great life. Celebrate my life. Don't, don't sit around and cry, you know? And so that's when I had to kind of ask myself, like, what do you want to do? And at the, at the time it was just, I want to help kids, you know? And it went from, I want to help kids. I want to help teenagers. And I went from teenagers. I want to help women, you know? Um, and it's just, it's been getting better and better. Just helping, you know? Well, what are some of the, most important lessons you've learned thus far oh man lessons life throws them at you too you know um one of the most important ones that i've learned is um you never know who's counting on you 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 just you never know and you never know what impact that may have on that person if you don't show up you know um I've had disappointments because I was waiting on people to show up, you know? And so one lesson that I vow to myself is that I plan on showing up every day that I have the opportunity to show up because I don't know who I'm helping, who I'm not helping. You know, I don't know who's being inspired. I don't know who did I just, you know, wake up from that six month depression, you know? So um, one lesson is to definitely just show up, be you, be authentic, you know, um, sometimes let them tears come out, girl. (laughs) (laughs) I know there's a lot of people who probably play the instrumental role in influencing you, but are there, is there anyone that's like the most important person to you in your life? The most important person, um, honestly, I would say after he left, his importance really rose to the top of my list and it would be my, my child's father. Um, because one thing that I do remember him telling me when we were younger and back then I didn't, it didn't phase me, you know, I was just kind of, Oh, he's just talking. Um, is that he knew that I would do a good job at raising his child. And at that time we didn't have kids. He used to be like, you my baby mama. I'm like, whatever, (laughs) you know, (laughs) mind you with the way we became cool. We were both from Florida going to the university of Memphis. So we were like, we got to represent Florida to the T (laughs) Tennessee don't know about Florida, you know? Um, and that's how we became cool. And so I used to call him baby daddy. He's coming baby mama. And we spoke it into existence. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but after he, he passed away, um, vividly remember this dream to where he literally like touched my hand and told me to take care of his child. Mm. And he released my hand and like kind of went up this escalator. He was so clean too. you know, he always stayed clean, (laughs) but he was like, went up this escalator and was saying goodbye. And at that time I didn't want to say goodbye. I'm like, no, where are you going? And mind you, we weren't together, but we just had a great relationship. We mm. co-parented so well. I loved it. Um, and I woke up from that dream. My daughter's shaking me like, you're crying. She's in the bed next to me. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong, but I didn't want to tell her the dream. <laughs> and, um, but for someone to put that pressure on you, because being an influence to a child, it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. People want to be parents, but being a parent, it's a big responsibility because you're releasing someone into the world to be successful, mm-hmm. you know, and what that success is, who knows, but you're releasing them into the world and you're just hoping you gave them enough tools and resources mm-hmm. and influence to do what's right. What are you most proud of looking back on your life so far? What are the highlights of your life that you're most proud of? I'm most proud of who I have become. Um, You know, I've had so many opportunities and 
met so many famous people and, you know, have taken pictures and, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I got to hug this person. But I'm really just proud of who I have become and who I feel that I'm evolving, evolving into. Um, because it takes a, a very strong person to, um, fall so many times and continue to get back up. And one thing that I do like about Oprah, um, is that she fell so many times, but she just never stopped. You know, she used her 24 hours to the best of her ability every day she got up. And now she influences so many people without even trying to. You know, to give a speech at the Oscars and people assume that you are uh, running for president just on a speech, that's influence, you know. And that's something that with me evolving and how I'm evolving, I do feel that one day I will be able to accomplish that. And that's something that I want to do. What are... um do you have any regrets when you look back on your life? Is there anything you would do you would do differently if you were given that opportunity? I would have probably came out my shell a little earlier. Um, I probably would have um, told people more how much I appreciated them. You know, I probably would have. I would be. I would communicate way more. Um, I find out now that communicating um, how you feel, whether the person receives it, you know, the way you want them to or not. It makes you feel it just it just takes the weight off of you, you know, um, avoiding conversations or not saying how you truly feel or just kind of accepting a situation and not being open about it. Um, if I could change anything, I would just I would come out of my shell at a much earlier age and I would definitely tell people you know, I appreciated them. I didn't appreciate them. I I would just be more vocal about, you know, what my true feelings were and be true to myself. All right. Last question. What does the future hold for Ebony? Man, what does it not hold? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to the moon and back probably, you know, there's a Tesla in there now, you know? So, um, I plan on taking um, as many women as I possibly can. And, you know, I always say women, you, fellas. You always represent the women. I man. know. I love you fellas to death. But I we got to keep the mamas of the household strong, you know. Um, I would take as many women as I possibly can to the level of success that they want to be. You know, success for some people could just be a happy family. Success for somebody else could be I want to be a millionaire. But, you know, to stop letting self-talk, self-doubt hold you back because I would not feel how I feel today and like how happy I am. And, you know, I wake up every day just ready to accomplish the next goal. You know, I, I would have never cried sitting here. I would have never let my emotion, I probably would have paused for a second, be like, wait, let me walk out and come back and finish. But to be so confident and where you are and who you are, I just want to take so many with me. You know, I, I I want people to experience this feeling. Well, I don't doubt that you will. Uh, you have been very successful in almost every endeavor you stepped out to achieve. So it's just a matter of time. Uh, I'll continue to sit back on the <laughs> sidelines and root for, I'll be that cheerleader that, that your dad, that your, who, your mom wanted you to be a cheerleader. Yeah. Like I, I'll, I'll, I'll be the Ebony cheerleader. I always have been. So uh, I'll continue to root for you because I know you're a very dynamic person. Um, you have a very beautiful smile. You're a very beautiful person. So I think most people will receive you. And then once you open your mouth and start talking, and they would be shocked that you have so much compassion for people, for people not like you, for people who didn't grow up like you. You have empathy, something that 45 is missing, is that you care about other people in a way that is very, very transparent. You know, you say people might not know who you are or what you're really about, but those who do get to know you realize you care about people more than, than people think. And so to sit back and watch you do your thing is going to be a joy, a fun ride. When you go to the moon and you grab that Tesla and you come back, you know, I want to get a ride. I'm going to take a selfie. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really thank you for taking this time out and talking to me, and I, I wish you nothing but success. Thank you. I appreciate it. Same, you know, anytime call me, enjoy the ride. We're going right. to cruise together. All right. On the Ebony Cruise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>